Welcome to worship today, and it's good to be here again for the third Sunday of Advent. Christmas is coming ever closer. We're lighting more and more candles as we draw nearer to, uh, to the Advent, or to the Christmas, Christmas Day, Christmas Eve. A few announcements today. There. Sounds like it's working now. Uh, a few announcements. Uh, last week there was a mistake in the chimes, and Lynn Gourlay's birthday was left out. So uh, that, was a, that was an error, and we'd like to correct that. So happy birthday to Lynn. Uh, and there she is. So happy birthday, Lynn. Um, a couple of other announcements. Um, we've had uh, two deaths the, this last week. Um, Fred Lindquist passed away this, this last week, and uh, so his funeral will be um, this coming week on Thursday. Uh, the information should be in the chimes there, so um, oh, yeah, you can look for that information. Also, some of you may remember a former member, Pat Naples. Uh, her sister, Ginger, contacted me, um, and, and she passed away recently. And her, her uh, memorial service will not be until February, but that'll be coming up uh, in a few months. On some brighter notes, uh, we have a Christmas brunch today, a meal today after church, so right after the service. Uh, out the door into the cafeteria, we'll be having a Christmas brunch, time to celebrate, and get in the Christmas mood, eat some delicious food prepared by some of our, our members, so thank you to them. Uh, also, next week, we will be having uh, All Home Sunday, and the announcement for that is in the chimes, but it's a, a time to celebrate Christmas together, so bring your kids and your grandkids and your neighbors and friends and all gather together in our, uh, uh, the family of God to celebrate Christmas together, and there'll be a children's message and some Christmas cookies and hot chocolate and all sorts of fun things uh, afterward, Christmas carols. So be sure to be here for that. With that, I begin. I believe it's time to begin. So let's begin with our opening hymn, Hail to the Lord's Anointed on page 398. God bless your worship.
please rise. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We confess our sins to God with these words. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Then let's take a moment silently to confess our sins to God. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all of your sins. So as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As it is Advent and we're drawing ever nearer to the Christmas day, we light one more candle uh, on the Advent wreath as the light of Christ is coming ever closer to being in the world. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light, which gives light to everyone, is coming into the world.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, Fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of the jackals, where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and rushes. And a highway shall be there, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. It shall belong to those who walk on the way. Even if they are fools, they shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it, they shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. This is the word of the Lord. Let us speak together the words of Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is taken from the book of James, the fifth chapter. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Behold, I will send my messenger before your face, who will prepare the way before you. Alleluia. Alleluia. Now when John heard in prison about the deeds of Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to them, said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised, and the poor have good news preached to them. Blessed is the one who is not offended by me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowd concerning John. What did you go out in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then, then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I say to you, among those born of women there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. For the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied about John, and if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now together confess our common faith, the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. 
Please be seated for the singing of our next hymn, Heart of Thrilling Voices Sounding. Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please be seated. And let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be good and pleasing in your sight. We do not deserve your presence or your intervention, but Lord, you sent your Son to bring us back into your kingdom. And for that we are thankful, and we ask that you would send your Spirit today again to hear, hear with us to hear your words, and to be moved by them, to live lives worthy of you. In Jesus' name, amen. When I was a kid, I used to really look forward to Christmas time. It was my favorite holiday. And as the season began, I just couldn't wait for Christmas music to start, and the lights to start to go up all, over, all around town, for us to go out and get a Christmas tree, bring it home and decorate it, decorate our house for Christmas and the church for Christmas, and then finally, Christmas Eve would come, and we'd have our Christmas program, and we'd get a bag of candy, and we'd go home and watch a Christmas carol, and then finally it would be Christmas morning, and I would wake up long before everyone else in the house, and I'd sneak out to the front room and see the lights twinkling in the darkness and the mountain of presents overflowing out from under the tree. There were eight of us, after all, lots of presents, and then I would go and sit and wait for two or three hours, waiting for everyone else to wake up so that Christmas morning could begin. We could turn on the Christmas train to announce that Christmas morning had arrived. People were also excited in our gospel story today. People were excited about Jesus. Everything that Jesus was doing and saying was new and different and strange and wonderful, and people were getting excited. As we read the previous chapters of Matthew before our reading today, we hear that the large crowds had started to follow him. They were amazed at his teaching. The disciples were amazed at his power. 
the crowds were filled with awe, and they praised God. Jesus is doing all of the things that Isaiah prophesies about in the reading that we had today. The blind receive sight, the deaf hear, the lame walk. And so people are starting to believe that the fulfillment of that prophecy is finally at hand. And so John, in prison, hears about all that Jesus is doing, hears all the things that Jesus has been doing, and so he sends some disciples to ask Jesus, are you the one who is to come? Or should we expect somebody else? Jesus says, go back and tell John what you see and what you hear. The blind receive sight, the deaf hear, the lame walk, the dead are raised, good news is preached to the poor. In other words, yeah, the prophecy is fulfilled. I'm here. People are excited about the new and wonderful, amazing things that Jesus is doing. Somewhere along the line, I lost my excitement for Christmas. I stopped watching those good old Christmas movies to get in the Christmas mood. I woke up later and later every year on Christmas morning. I got busy. I got tired. And one year, I looked around at myself and asked, what happened to my excitement? What happened to my wonder? What happened to my joy that Jesus Christ is born? What happened to our excitement for Jesus? The crowds in Galilee and Judea were excited about Jesus. They were excited about all the new and wonderful things he was doing and saying. But we've heard the stories before. We've heard about those miracles before and heard the teachings before. We've been through Advent dozens and dozens of times always waiting for something that never really arrives. Because we're waiting during Advent for the birth of Christ, for Christ to be born, but also for Christ to return. And while we celebrate every year that Jesus came and was born on Christmas, he never seems to show up in our lives, in our time, in our world. Somewhere along the line, we lost our excitement. We lost our wonder. Maybe we even lost our hope. It's like an old episode of The Twilight Zone that some of you may remember. It's called Night of the Meek, and it's about a department store Santa Claus. You know, the guy who dresses up as Santa at the mall, kids come and sit on his lap, ask him what they want for Christmas. And so this man has a job as the department store Santa, and he used to be excited about Christmas. He used to have the wonder and excitement and joy of Christmas in his heart, but through the years, He's seen the holiday, in his words, become more about pushing your way through department store aisles than about love and joy. His life had taken him to some hard times, to unemployment and homelessness. And he saw the poverty of poor families and poor children who wouldn't be getting any Christmas gifts this year. He was just able to find this seasonal job, dressing up as Santa for a few weeks of the Christmas season. And on the last night, Christmas Eve, the last night of his employment, he's leaving the store and he says to this manager, I just wish that on one Christmas I could see some of the hopeless ones and the dreamless ones. I just wish that on one Christmas the meek could inherit the earth. And he walks out into the cold, snowy streets, alone and lonely, and he has no more excitement left about Christmas or about life. No more excitement, no more wonder, no more hope. But then something happens. Because it's a Twilight Zone episode, things couldn't stay normal for very long. So as he's on his way home, a cat jumps out of an alley, scares him. And he knocks the cat knocks over a big bag. He walks over to see what it is, and he discovers that it's a big bag full of presents. Here he is, dressed up as Santa Claus, and there's a giant bag full of presents, and so what does he do? He picks it up, carries it out into the streets, and starts giving away presents to everyone he meets, to all the poor children in his neighborhood, all over the city. And this is a magical bag that somehow, gives, somehow seems to have whatever anybody wants, whatever they ask for, he gives it to them. And he's handing out gifts for hours, and finally, 
the end of the night comes. His bag is empty. He's given out the last gift. And he's sitting on a step, and an old man, to whom he had given a pipe and a smoking jacket, comes up to him and asks, well, what did you want for Christmas? And he says that, after thinking for a moment, that really I think the gift that I would like would be to be able to do this every year. And then he starts on his way home. But there must have been just a little magic left in that bag. Because as he goes, as he's going home, passing by that same alley, he hears another noise. It's sleigh bells. And he looks, and there's a sleigh, and reindeer, and an elf pops out and tells them that they'd get a, better get back to the North Pole and start getting ready for next Christmas. And so he flies off into the night, and he thinks to himself, wow. I think that this is the nicest Christmas since the beginning of time. And as nice as that story is, that's where he actually goes wrong. As beautiful as the story is, and as much joy and hope and happiness he was able to give on that night, there was a better Christmas. As much joy and hope that he kindled that day, there was a Christmas that gave more. As nice as the gifts that he gave were, there was a better Christmas that brought more joy, more excitement, and more wonder and hope than any other Christmas. The night when the greatest gift of all was given. And it wasn't from magic. This one was real. On the first Christmas, Jesus was born. And Mary and Joseph stared with wonder. And the angels sang for joy. And the shepherds ran excitedly to tell everyone the good news. On that first Christmas, Jesus brought excitement and wonder and joy and hope that would last for more than just one night. And then Jesus grew up and came healing and teaching and preaching. And the excitement and hope continued to grow. But then one day, the excitement was cut off, cut short. And suddenly, instead of wonder, there was anger. And instead of praising God, the crowds were shouting, crucify him. And on that Black Friday, it finally looked like all hope and joy was gone for good. It looked like hope and excitement for the disciples and for his followers was over. Is that where our joy and hope and excitement ends as well? Well, no. Of course not, because these aren't just old stories that we tell once a year. The stories of Christ's birth and life and death change our lives even today. The excitement wasn't only for the shepherds, and there wasn't only joy for the angels, and there wasn't only wonder for Mary and Joseph, and it didn't end on the night of his birth, and it didn't even end on the night of his death. Because three days later, there was something new to be excited about. Something happened that was even more new and exciting and wonderful and joyful and hopeful than even his birth. Because three days later, Jesus rose from the dead. These aren't just old stories, and the excitement about Jesus doesn't have to end. For all of us who are hopeless and dreamless, if you ever feel like you've lost your joy and wonder, well, when we celebrate Christmas again this year, Christ's birth again, he really comes to be here with us today. He is really present here with his church. He's present in his word that is preached and read, present in all of our hearts, and he gives us a reason to still have excitement and wonder and hope. Our excitement doesn't end here. Instead, this is only the beginning because Jesus died and rose again and he has promised that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Whoever believes in him will live even though he dies and whoever lives and belie believes in him will never die. The one who believes in Jesus, who was baptized into his name, has been baptized into his death and joined with him in his resurrection. Our excitement doesn't end here, because we are also going to be raised from the dead when Christ returns. And then that prophecy of Isaiah really will be fulfilled. A highway, the way of holiness, and the redeemed shall walk there. That's us. We shall walk there. We will come to Zion singing, everlasting joy on our heads, we shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. 
No more wandering the streets, alone and lonely, without hope or joy, looking for some magic to save us. Jesus has already saved us, and he will come and lead us on that highway to the new city, to the new heavens and the new earth, where there will be joy and wonder for good. The healing will be for good. We will all be together for good. We will be saved for good. And that's a reason to be excited. That's a reason to wonder. That's a reason for hope. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. We share God's peace with one another as we prepare for the singing of our next hymn, which is all of us singing, but also the choir intermixed. Please rise for prayer. During our prayers today, we will be praying with a responsive um, 
song led for us by the choir on page 780. So if you go to page 780, though, that will be the, the response to each petition. of your Son has enlightened the darkness of our hearts and every corner of creation. Hear us as we pray in his name and according to his will, for you have sent messengers to prepare the way of your Son's coming. Give us ears to hear and hearts to believe the words delivered to us by all who bear your word. Gracious Lord, you have instituted the home to be a refuge for husbands and wives and a place of growth and safety for children. Look with favor upon the homes of our land and our congregation and grant that faith might be delivered from one generation to the next. Lord, you rule over all things in heaven and earth. And until the day when your son comes in glory to bring in his kingdom, give us wisdom and insight. Give wisdom and insight to our leaders that we may all live peaceable lives. sing for joy. But until the final day of restoration, draw near to all who have requested our prayers, especially Dorothy, Florence, Marie, Becky, Courtesy, and Ed. Give them healing according to your gracious will. Bind up those who grieve, that they may look for the resurrection of all flesh, especially with Pat's family and Fred's family. They look to you for comfort and hope. O 
God, your love invites us to rejoice in your goodness in every circumstance of life. Teach us the joy, teach us the joy that comes from knowing your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, for whom we wait, through his name, through our Lord Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We now close with our final hymn, Hark the Glad Sound, on page 349. Come, Lord, quickly.